Thank you very much. Well, um, it's really lovely to see so many people here. Um, thanks very much for um, thanks very much for coming along. Um, so this um, session is all about using 360 uh, degree images and videos to create VR experiences um, for education. Uh, and I say education. Uh, hi, Graham. Uh, um, as in the School of Education where I work. So uh, my name is Adrian Cawthorn and I'm the learning technologist uh, at the School of Education up here in the uh, University of Sheffield. So who doesn't love a nice poll? So a quick poll here, um, just to uh, get a sense of uh, where people are at. Uh, have you created any VR or 360 content? Um, just um just pop something in the chat really um if you have um if you haven't um if you'd like to if you're an absolute expert uh, if you want to learn any more just so we can get a, a sense of uh where people are at really okay so we've got to know there brilliant so I'm getting quite a few replies here. That's good. So I'm glad to see that um, we're not all experts here because I wasn't going to change my presentation for the experts. Okay. Really, okay, so we've got a really nice kind of mix of uh, some people here and uh, experiences of using 360 and VR. So let's crack on. So a bit of context really. Um, so uh, in the School of Education, we had the opportunity to um, get some funding from uh, the university's um, alumni fund. So uh, I joined the uh, School of Education in about 2017 and found that I had some really uh, willing and interested academics. Uh, and I went to them and, and said, uh, here's this thing, 360 or VR. Um, we can take images, uh, we can create immersive content. What can we do? Uh, what can we do in your kind of learning teaching? So we, we kind of put our heads together and decided we would um, really like to create a collection of interactive and multimedia VR spaces. Uh, so we, we, uh, we put together a, a, a bid and we got some uh, funding to uh, purchase some equipment. So that um, sort of was uh, great. Um, we didn't quite get to um, um, getting an actual platform or host uh, that was a little bit more tricky uh, at the time um, actual equipment cameras and stuff were um, like really kind of um, prominent in the market so that was quite easy and I'll get on to what equipment we uh, used and uh, what platforms we've sort of tried in a little bit so um, this is kind of like roughly the structure of this webinar uh, in not particularly this order it, um, it might be a little bit muddled but uh, I want to kind of um, um, do a bit of kind of like a technical primer uh, really uh, about what the technology uh, is and uh, there's a bit of uh, practical stuff there um, so get ready to um, do some coding um, uh, we'll have a look at the hardware you might uh, used to make 360 media, uh, look at some of the software and workflows that I've used. Uh, I'll show you some of the projects, uh, talk about that and the pedagogy, uh, and we'll look at you know where you can publish uh, 360 um, uh, VR spaces to. And hopefully, uh, if I don't waffle on too much, we'll get to some discussions uh, or questions at the end. So um, the sort of technical primer, I guess, um, what are 360 images? Well, if you've been on planet Earth um, on the internet uh, and looked at Google Maps, at Google Earth um, and Street View, you'll have been using 360 images all this time. So um, it's basically the technology that Google Street View uses. Um, Google calls these photospheres, or um, uh, I like to call them bubble images because they are like a bubble with an image inside them. And what I like about them is uh, you can you can put them on the web and you can augment them with other stuff. So, for example, uh, in the street view here, this is one that I've made uh, many years ago. Uh, it's augmented with um, a bit of a kind of navigation thing here. There's a little mappy thing here. And uh, oh, yes, there's a close button there. So it's got uh, it's got things in it that you can interact with. And that's quite nice. 
Um, getting 360 degree images, um, I've opted for the easy way. I'm just uh, buying a 360 camera and this is the one that we've got. It's an Insta360 uh, camera uh, and I see in the chat that um, a few people have been using those. Uh, generally, these kind of cameras are two, uh, basically two cameras stuck, uh, stuck together back to back with a 180 degree fisheye lens on each side. Um, and then you take a picture and it stitches two images together. Uh, anybody who's ever done maths knows that two times 180 is 360. So you get a 360 image out of that. Um, and um, what you get out of that generally uh, are equirectangular images. And I'll explain what equirectangular images are uh, in a bit. Um, if you don't want to bother with one of these, if you just want to have a try, then smartphones or iPads um, are perfectly um, are capable of doing this kind of thing. If you're a bit of a DSLR buff uh, and you've got skills and time, you can also do it with um, DSLRs. Um, um, where you take a, a bunch of photos from all around you and stitch it together in some kind of software. I haven't, I haven't done that. Um, um, I've opted for the easier uh, kind of points and click option. So uh, equirectangular images, we've all seen them. This is what's usually wrapped around a globe. Um, and it's, uh, you know, at the most common equirectangular image we've um, actually come across. So you can see, uh, if you imagine a globe, uh, you peel that off and represent it in a, a rectangle. This is kind of what you get. So the tops and the bottoms are very, very distorted. So Antarctica isn't flat like that. It's actually more round uh, and it's a bit distorted at the top there. Uh, round the middle, it's a bit more um, sort of undistorted, I guess. Um, so that's uh, basically an echo rectangular image. And to get that into um, some kind of 3D thing, uh, sphere or bubble, uh, what you do is just wrap that around a 3D thing, uh, a 3D sphere. Uh, easy, pretty easy. So you uh, you have a, a rectangle, you wrap it around a sphere and you get a globe. Okay, uh, uh, and we're going to do that. Um, so a real echo rectangular image, this is one from a camera and uh, you can see um, that it's very distorted at the top and bottom and uh, um, it looks like it's got two windows at either side, but in actual fact, that's the same window. Um, so if you were to wrap that around the globe, uh, the window would join around the back, really. Uh, there's a potential problem with that if you're wrapping it around a globe in that um, we don't look at the world as a globe. Um, uh, we're not a god looking on the globe. We're kind of inside that globe looking outwards. So uh, we have to wrap it around something else and we will find out very shortly what that is. So we've got a bit of a practical bit. I'll explain what we're doing. Uh, so feel free to um, do this, or if you just want to watch, uh, feel free to do that as well. Um, so what we'll use for this is a um, really basic tool called A-Frame. It's a, a, it's a, a JavaScript uh, web VR framework. Uh, you don't need to uh, bother going to this URL. Uh, that's just for reference, really. Uh, I've got some more links. Um, so this framework will uh, enable you to easily create um, VR environments um, in, in basically HTML. Um, uh, what we'll use is uh, Glitch, which is a, a online coding tool. So we don't need uh, anything else apart from a browser. Uh, and just to note, really, there are lots of other easier ways to do this. So it's not all about the coding, but it's a good introduction to uh, you know, kind of understanding uh, how the technology works. So it is just a bit of code, really, and it's very easy to get something up and running uh, with this A-frame thing. Um, brilliant, you've developed something before. I'll have a look at that link. Um, so uh, I'll very briefly explain this. Uh, perhaps um, uh, people have uh, used HTML before, but this little bit just loads the scripting. So everything after that is A-frame stuff. The thing we're concerned with is this thing here, which is a sphere, and that generates a sphere, and the sphere's got some properties in it. So this one here is the bit that um, we can use to wrap an image around uh, that sphere. And we've got various things for the size of the sphere and where it is in VR space and uh, rotating it. Um, uh, there's another thing here, a sky, which would might be the key to um, creating, you know, realistic spaces. Um, 
So what that does, this code, is it just creates a sphere and wraps an image around it. Okay. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just kind of um, um, sort of talk through what to do. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just pop that link in the chat first, so you can um, um, kind of get that up uh, and start working on it while I'm talking. Um, so uh, basically, what what I'd like you to do, if you want to, is um, is go to that link and you'll see a button in the top um, right hand corner. Uh, remix to edit so you click that and that kind of opens it up uh, I can see there's plenty of people on there already and it lets you edit that so if you go along to the assets bit in the sidebar you can click on one of the other images one of the real images and paste uh, and actually copy the URL and then if you go to line 11 um, which is the SRC uh, bit and then in between the speech marks just paste that in and what you'll see uh, is a little bit of um, magic there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick from my um, presentation and go on to screen and I'll share my screen and quickly go through that. Okay, so we've got this code here. So I'm going to click Remix to Edit and um, choose the ones with tractors in. There we go. And give that a moment to wake up. Okay, so I'm going over to assets. So I've uploaded some assets. So I'm going to choose the uh, at school here. I'm going to click copy and then to index HTML and paste over the URL that's within the speech marks under source. Okay, and voila, we've got something that highly unrealistic there so what we can do rather than applying the image to the sphere we can apply it to what's called the sky so i'm going to take the whole src line here and then rather than oops get my mouse rather than the sky having a color i'm just going to paste that in so sky is now the image so that looks fairly nifty that okay so we've got um an image that's all around us so we're basically within a bubble image yes yeah, so we're inside that sphere okay so have we all managed to do that for those who've had a go um so with this uh, a frame thing cool um it, it's easy to um, get something really basic um, up and running and then uh, extending that beyond something basic requires you know a, a little bit more skills in coding but you can you can insert text in there you can insert planes so not airplanes but um, sort of like shapes um, squares with, uh, that you can put text on uh, you can import 3d models um, you can uh, add flat images um, so you can create image galleries you can um, add uh, video, uh, all kinds of things within there, and interactivity, but there's a bit of a learning curve to it. Um, it's not all coding, so uh, this example here, I'll quickly show you, uh, it comes with a, um, um, a companion app uh, that's called um, uh, an inspector or something, and it enables you to edit things in a in more, of a, uh, more of a visual way. Okay, so that's the practical bit. So I'm going to get back to my um, presentation. Uh, just bear with. Okay, so okay, so I hope that's kind of given you a, a little introduction and um, to. Um, you know the kind of basis of this technology um, a lot of it's done in the web and it uses uh, 3d technology uh, within a web browser um, so uh, in terms of myself um, I want to kind of just kind of describe um, uh, what we've done so I'm going to give you a brief um, um, outline of my journey with 360 um, have a look at the current equipment and uh, the kinds of things that I do and uh, uh, and have done 
Uh, and if you're just starting out and you don't want to uh, spend a lot of money, I've got a few kind of tips uh, of what you can do on a budget, uh, how you can play with this stuff without spending any money. So my journey began um, back in about 2013. Uh, I bought myself a nice nifty Google phone and discovered that uh, on there, the camera had a photosphere camera, which uh, excited me greatly. Uh, so I went and took uh, photos from pretty much uh, most continents uh, and uh, whack them up on Google Maps. So I've got loads of stuff on Google Maps and it's um, uh, all sorts of fun. So what you do with that camera uh, is you stand there like an idiot uh, and you um, swivel on a spot and take loads of pictures um, um, from all around you. And then it stitches it all together and comes up with um, usually quite a nice photo. Um, then th that kind of evolved to um, where we're at now in about 2017. Uh, well, actually, um, um, uh, previous to that, I worked in uh, journalism studies, um, helping students make multimedia. And I was trying to get them to uh, explore using 360 within uh, storytelling. Uh, academics um, thought it was a bit of a, uh, a fad, really. So uh, I left and joined the uh, School of Education, not because they thought it was a fad, I just fancied a change. Um, so we had some great academics. I couldn't have done this without the academics. Um, so backing me and having the kind of um, you know, lots of ideas. So we got the funding, Got uh, we got uh, three of these uh, Insta360 cameras with these kind of nice tripods. We got this weird looking microphone here, a Zoom uh, H3 VR ambisonic recorder. I haven't really done much with that, to be honest. Um, and then we've got a bunch of um, uh, VR headsets, uh, 10, but there's 12 in my cupboard. So I think they've been breeding in the cupboard. Um, <clears throat> the workflow um that i kind of go through um after uh, after kind of um uh, working with the academics working out what we want to do um we we do the photography and filming so i've got a slide on each one of these uh, but uh, this is the kind of um, um sort of basic workflow so uh, you do your photography or filming you prepare and convert your files work out where you want to store them um you, you might do some image editing or fixing or sweetening. Uh, uh, and if you've got videos, uh, you need to kind of just be aware of the limitations uh, and issues, but you can edit them and they are quite powerful. So let's go through that workflow. So a um, lot of photography and filming. Um, I don't know if I've coined this phrase, but um, uh, I think I invented it yesterday. Uh, the photographer's dilemma. So how not to be in a shot. So. Um, with a 360 camera, you're taking a picture of um, everything all around you. So you don't really want to be in shot. So um, but we can see Becky here hiding behind a tree. So this is what we have to do as three, uh, 360 photographers. We have to use trees, uh, buildings, sheds, bins, um, pillar boxes, you name it, I've hidden behind it. And poor old Becky there uh, actually can't get behind the tree because I'm already behind the tree. Um, so that's a bit of a uh, a bit of a skill to learn, so how not to be in shot. Uh, luckily, we have, um, with most uh, 360 cameras, uh, uh, it comes with a companion app that you can use on an uh, uh, iPad, so you can hide uh, within Bluetooth distance uh, and control the camera via the app. Um, one thing that we've learned is to just remember about the point of focus, so um, the actual subject within the picture. Uh, although you're taking the 360 um, image or video you've still got to um, not think about um, 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 what's the main thing within there um, because um, uh, what you've got with the 360 camera is you've got what's called a seam and it's the bit where the um, the two images are actually stitched together and it can quite often be a little bit distorted uh, or kind of stitching errors can occur so you don't want that right down the middle of somebody's face so you need to kind of point the the camera roughly at the at main thing within the uh, actual um, um sort of scene that you're trying to capture um a little bit about file preparation um your your camera will come with a desktop app and that's probably the best app to use um so mine is the insta 360 um and that that um it does uh, stitching calibration um, so it'll fix any errors with stitching it'll do a bit of color correction 
uh, and it'll output in various uh, various um, sort of sizes. Um, and it does some uh, rudimentary um, um, uh, video editing if you just want to trim uh, clips. Um, think carefully about storage as well. That's a problem because um, some of these things are quite huge. Images are usually quite small, but obviously if you've got a lot of images, it uh, it will mount up. But I've usually found that I can I can put images on a network and work off them fine. Uh, videos though, they're they're actually huge. Um, I've uh, I've come back with you know sort of twenty gigabyte um, um, videos, so you can't really put those on network storage and um, expect to work from them. So um, you have to use local storage sometimes. So they're the kind of issues we've got with storage. Um, so you might want to think about uh, editing images. Um, so my favourite tool at the moment for editing images is actually Photoshop. So it's got some really good tools for um, uh, editing uh, 360 images. So the uh, screenshot at the top here shows you how to get into the sort of 360 viewer. But once you get in the uh, 360 viewer, you can do all the things that you might do on normal images. Like you can um, sort of clean things, you can remove things. You know, if, uh, I usually remove the tripod from the bottom of the um, um, sort of picture. You can just select it and use the content aware fill. Uh, and just delete it and it'll fill it in with whatever it thinks uh, needs to go in there. Uh, you can heal things. So if you've got any any kind of uh, glitches in your picture, you can kind of heal those. And uh, just your color corrections. Uh, if you just want to sweeten that image up, uh, if it's looking a bit dreary, then uh, you can just apply a color correction. Uh, I found that Google Photos also does this. So just um, sort of upload your images to Google Photos. It's uh, 360 compatible and it's got some cool little filters that you can see here, uh, or just some basic um, brightness and contrast controls. Um, and also uh, other um, camera apps. So. Uh, you can use the GoPro apps with uh, any cameras um, sort of JPEGs that come off it. There's a Garmin one called Verb, uh, and they'll pretty much do the same thing. Um, you'll be able to kind of um, um, so sweeten your images, do a bit of fixing. Um, so they're the kind of general apps that you can use. Um, so 360 videos, um, there, uh, there are issues with them. Um, but it's incredibly powerful. And uh, there's a bit of a testimonial from a student at the end, which uh, sort of demonstrates that. Uh, but issues we have are you know, massive file sizes that need to be compressed. You might lose a bit of quality. Um, it's, it's more difficult to create uh, slick experiences because of the file size and the resources needed. Um, some platforms need, need ex extra money. Um, oh, that's useful to know about GIMP, great. Um, um, uh, and some platforms just don't actually support 360 um, 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 uh, videos. Um, one little, little tip I've got is to film from a static position. So avoid uh, moving around because uh, it can induce um, your users being uh, feeling like they want to be sick. Um, so that's, that's um, uh, unless you're very, very experienced and um, there are a few tricks to avoid that, but, but um, uh, place your camera in one place and just let the uh, action unfold around it. Um, again, Adobe Premiere, uh, that's what I've been using for editing videos, uh, 360 videos. It's, it's brilliant. It's slightly complicated to get it set up, but uh, once it's set up, it's got a bunch of dedicated VR plugins. Um, they'll do things like um, 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 Gaussian blurs and kind of uh, various visual effects. Uh, you can uh, insert 3D text within a um, sort of uh, space uh, and graphics, and um, you could put an idea, the, the kind of little badge that goes at the bottom of the uh, image. And um, um, Final Cut, that's um, um, that's compatible uh, and DaVinci Resolve, and I believe we've just had a few uh, sort of um, uh, things on the chat that. Um, uh, people with some suggestions as well. Um, a few other kind of notable software. I mean, I've said your, your camera's 360 app, that's great. This uh, screen grab is the uh, Insta one. Uh, Photoshop, I've mentioned, Premiere. After Effects, it does do 360 and it does some really good things with 360, but the workflow is awful. Um, it does tracking and all that kind of cool stuff that After Effects can do, um, but it's 
a bit of an odd at workflow. Uh, one that I've come across um, recently uh, is called Hugging, um, which uh, is for stitching images together. And um, oh, uh, okay, Premiere plugin is tracking great. Um, uh, yeah, Hugging. If you uh, if you want to do stuff with DSLR, I believe Hugging is one of the apps that you can use to stitch images together. Uh, I've used it just to kind of um, re um, to change the um, 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 like a wonky horizon when I've done some images um, and that works quite well. Uh, again, it's got a pretty awful interface, so just be aware. Okay, and then publishing, we've, we've, um, um, we've been through what um, um, I feel like is every, uh, 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 every possible platform. Um, so there are a bunch of uh, all-in-one 360 platforms where you can kind of drag and drop things in, you can add objects and it's nice and easy. Uh, and they're probably the ones that most people will go for. Um, so things like ThingLink, um, Round Me, <clears throat> brilliant. Just keep adding adding these things because I, 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 uh, I mean, these are just the ones that I, I, I know. So um, 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 if you've got any, um, um, other suggestions, just pop them in the chat. That's really useful. Um, yeah, HP5, I've used that one. Um, WonderVR um, is one that we're looking at at the moment. That's um, very promising. Um, and um, I believe this does uh, multi-user uh, stuff. Um, like Graham knows um, a little bit more, uh, my colleague Graham, uh, who's in here. Um, so we can, we can uh, get students in. Uh, in groups and um, uh, they can chat, they can interact. I believe they can turn the audio on as well and chat um, um, so verbally. Um, uh, if you just want the kind of like the commando one uh, where you do it yourself, um, like grab yourself a bit of web hosting and iframe that we uh, did the little exercise earlier with. Uh, you'll need a web server or you can actually do it on GitHub. Um, uh, that'll serve up these kinds of pages quite nicely. Um, or if you just want something really, really simple, uh, Google uh, Google Photos. We've uh, uh, we've done a few little projects on photos uh, where you just want the students to look at it. Uh, or Google Maps, you can upload your photos there, uh, and that integrates with Street View as well. So uh, there's a little kind of web page that I've been looking at that's got a bit of a roundup of uh, different sort of uh, free um, sort of tools. So um, if you want to have a look at uh, immersive web. Dot dev. That's quite an interesting page. Um, if you're looking at doing this on a budget, if you're not sure whether you want to uh, spend anything on it, then grab yourself an iPad or a, a decent phone and get the Street View app. And you can very quickly um, sort of create uh, 360 photos um, within a few minutes uh, and get yourself a copy of um, uh, A-Frame. And, uh, and you can publish them so very, very easily. And again, uh, I've mentioned um, um, Google Photos. Uh, that's a really good app. Um, Facebook, I discovered that if you upload a, a 360 image to Facebook, it will render it out as a 360 interactive image. So that's quite nice. So um, last bit really um, is to have a look at some of the examples and a bit of the pedagogy behind um, um, some of our 360 stuff. So I've got um, a few examples that I'm going to go through. Um, so one of them is a virtual tour of um, um, an early years classroom. So this one shows uh, students the layout of a classroom and all the materials that the teachers decided to put um, so within there. Uh, and what um, the 360 experience does is it gives students much more than just um, um, if you were to do this with um, some sort of 2D photographs and text explanations, what you might sort of like traditionally find, you know, in textbooks and things like that. So um, they can look around the place, they can see the uh, relationships between different objects. Um, we can, uh, we've also kind of uh, enhanced that with um, some sort of text panels with questions to prompt uh, thinking, reflection and discussion. Um, we've got uh, an example from the National Video Game Museum in uh, Sheffield. So we just uh, did a, a really quick virtual tour of that. Uh, and this just explores the role of video games in informal education. And it's there just as a, as a um, prompt for uh, reflection on childhood, really. 
and then I've got a few examples of how we've used 360 video. Uh, again, it's it's um, 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 it's observing play. We've found that in education, um, it's a really good tool for actually observing children uh, playing in classrooms. Okay, so um, a little bit more detail uh, about these, um, and I will put the links in the chat for these. Um, so I think this is this one. Oops. So the um, at Broomhall at School Tour. Um, this uh, we did this on Thinglink and um, um, Thinglink. Uh, I think quite a few people have used it. It's uh, easy drag and drop editing. Uh, we can add. Uh, we can embed. Uh, media, so text, uh, images, video, audio, uh, and we did all that. Um, the free version is very good, actually. Um, I don't really see the point in um, actually buying it. Um, it does everything that we needed it to. Uh, but some of the features uh, you have to kind of pay for. So if you want to do 360 video, you uh, have to pay them a bit for that. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. Um, so uh, we've got these various uh, hotspots here that uh, help the user navigate to different um, sort of places within the um, uh, space. Um, so I'm, uh, I think I took uh, over 100 pictures of the space and um, so there's quite a lot of different scenes. Um, um, so we've got navigation around the uh, space, uh, lots so we can look at um, different tables in detail. And then we've got hotspots for information and then hotspots for media. So the information panel looks like this. Um, so it's got a like, picture in it. Uh, and then just a really simple question uh, asking the students to uh, have a little think about this um, um, space. Um, and then the video one. We've embedded a 360 video within the, um, um, the 360 tour. So it's the children playing on this particular um, sort of table. Um, National Video Game Museum, uh, I haven't got a link for this because uh, it's got student responses in it. So we use Google Photos uh, and created a gallery and shared that with students. And um, we found that uh, Google Photos um, supports 360 images and 360 videos. And all we wanted them to do is have a discussion. Uh, and this is when we were uh, online as well. So we're doing online teaching. Uh, and they were commenting on the images. It's basic, but it's super, super simple to make and share. So if you want something really rapid and you've got a bunch of 360 images, then Google Photos is great. Uh, this is what it looks like. So we've got a gallery of images and then uh, we've got some sort of quite active chat. So the, um, the tutor will do a starter sort of question and the students would um, um, uh, have a discussion about that. Okay, uh, and then uh, using 360 videos. Um, so the top um, so screenshot there is the one from the classroom um, um, in the previous um, sort of tour example. Uh, but we've used this in different situations, uh, just getting students to watch it and um, and uh, and reflect on that. Um, so they're observing the children playing. Um, and then uh, about a month ago, uh, we did the other example here. Uh, 360 videos observing creative play um, where um, they were kind of uh, the uh, the um, the um, um, the kids were playing with um, um, uh, uh, so various items related to kind of stem education uh, you know making things and uh, we were observing with that and with this one we just uh, we just popped it on culture which is our um, uh, video hosting platform which supports 360 video and integrates with Blackboard. Uh, so popped it in a Blackboard course, uh, enabled commenting. So there are uh, student discussions around that video as well, um, quite lively discussions as well. Um, so here's a little um, a testimonial from a student. Um, so uh, if you don't want to read it all, so basically they're saying that um, uh, using 360 film was an awakening experience. So never before had the opportunity to engage with such an interactive thing. Um, what's good about it is that uh, the viewer or researcher has the power to assess what's going on all around them. So from behind, above and around. Uh, and as a researcher, um, 
at a, at a group discussion. So um, they were able to tap into deep level analysis um, and follow each child on their journey, observing how they interacted with people, resources and provision. So it's opened up, uh, you know, lots of scope for discussion, uh, which they wouldn't have been able to do without the um, sort of use of the 360 camera. So that's, that's quite a good uh, sort of testimonial from a student. Um, a little bit about the pedagogy. Um, one thing that you hear quite a lot is, well, it's not a replacement for the real thing. Why do we want to do this? Well, um, I don't think that um, sort of diminishes uh, the pedagogy at all. Um, yeah, it's not a replacement for the real thing and you'd never uh, claim it to be that, but it, it's, um, uh, it's a thing in itself. It's sort of powerful within itself. Uh, and I think because it's interactive, uh, it helps engagement. So anything that's interactive, I think, is um, uh, inherently engaging. Um, the full 360 view, as the student said in that testimonial, um, the full uh, 360 view of things, they can see everything. It's not an edited view, so it's not what your teacher wants you to see. You can see everything uh, and you can understand the relations, uh, relationships and interactions between things, objects, people, people and objects. Um, so that's really powerful. Uh, and something that I've been a, a, a fairly interested in, it's kind of piqued my interest like right from the start, is, is uh, how it can be uh, impactful on, uh, on um, like a psychological level. Uh, what are the um, processes that are going on within your brain um, when you experience a VR thing, particularly when you put a headset on? Uh, but we're not just talking about headsets, it's about kind of um, accessing it in lots of different ways. But there are, uh, you know, kind of theories about uh, how mirror neurons fire. Um, so when you're looking at these experiences of others uh, and that, that uh, uh, you can read a bit more about that on, uh, on the SIMTI website. There's a, li um, um, it's a little link down there. Um, OK, that, that appears to be the end of uh, um, um, uh, I seem to have. Um, throttle through that um, so quicker than uh, when I practiced it. So, um, has anybody got any questions or thoughts? And um, there's been a, a lot, a lot of stuff in the chat, uh, which I'd be interested to read. So if you've got any questions, feel free to so pop your hand up and uh, you can turn your mic on if you want to chat. Yeah, I think I think thanks for actually sharing stuff. That's really good. So Alicia, you um, raise a really interesting question um, about what do you have to be mindful of uh, from an accessibility point of view? Uh, and accessibility is something that, that I'm really interested in, but with uh, VR, um, it's really kind of racked my brain because it's not completely um, accessible. Uh, we've got, um, um, particularly with uh, using headsets, uh, if you go down that route, there's, there's a lot of problems with, um, um, so people who uh, who actually can't handle it. So you have to provide uh, alternative means for them to kind of view this. Uh, um, so that's why I, I really like doing things on the web, where you can uh, you can view it in a headset if you want to, um, uh, but you can also view it within a browser. Uh, and there's different levels of um, um, uh, of um, viewing it if you um, can't actually use a headset. I mean myself, I uh, I can. Uh, I can have them on for, uh, on for about five minutes and then just feel sick. Um, so I do have a, a bit of vertigo. Um, and in terms of the actual uh, material that you create as well, um, I'm not convinced that it's fully accessible because um, a lot of the methods for um, creating experiences, it's very visual. So you've got um, so perhaps an image there and you've got text overlaid on it and I'm not quite sure I, uh, uh, how accessible that is, whether um, it's it, uh, it's compatible with screen readers, that kind of thing. But the the good thing is that 
it's a multimedia experience so you can have these images but you can also include sound in it so you can have kind of uh, ambient sound you can uh, include narration uh, and all those things that you might include in a visual or kind of video um, some material um, so I hope that's answered that one crikey where's the questions so Sarah have you used any of the scenarios with the headsets if so what did that bring uh, to the experience so uh, unfortunately with the headsets um, we uh, we bought them kind of mid-semester and then um, uh, we didn't get a chance to use them we were going to use them and then we got locked down uh, and then we haven't really used them so we're using them uh, in a couple of weeks not with these scenarios um, that we've got uh, these are uh, the kind of scenarios that we've um, actually built are, uh, are linked on blackboard so they're for students to um, sort of have a look in their own time uh, whether students use um, you know um, the mobile phones or, or uh, if they've got co um, um, a cardboard headset um, 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 uh, I'm not quite sure um, and in a way the headsets are a bit of a, a nice thing to have but that's not not particularly uh, our priority uh, we're doing different things with the headset we're exploring uh, XR uh, applications uh, and kind of how um, how some children learn uh, in uh, um, with games and VR and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think I think a lot, a lot, Sarah. The headsets are quite limiting in that that uh, you have to have one for a start. <laughs> and and um, uh, in terms of using them, I find them incredibly awkward. Uh, if you're trying to browse around the internet, it's a, it's a really kind of clunky experience, uh, and they're very difficult to set up. Um, um, Hey John, I think that your last question. Um, the recording, the recording will be shared shortly after the presentation. Um, if you okay. want to share the slides alongside them, could you forward those over to me, and I'll keep. I'll copy sure, them yeah. Now. Yeah, cool. Perfect. Yeah. If you're happy for me to now, I'll end the recording. Yeah, sure. Yeah.